All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a March 26th edition of Morning Coffee Review. Things are looking a little different over here at uh, my Minnesota uh, headquarters, but we're going to do something special today, and there's a reason why. So it'll all make sense here in a minute. But uh, today we're going to talk about different connected workflows, meaning how we're going to use the iPad for review or review for iPad, as well as Bluebeam Cloud out in the field. So we're going to start. Michael's going to fire up uh, a quick session or project. And then uh, I'm going to jump over to uh, iPad land and we'll play with that. But before we get started, how's it going today, Michael? Going good. Excited for our demo today and the amount of time you put in to make everyone um, have some good feel and visibility into the applications that we're going to showcase today. So we're excited to showcase this and have this on the good old web for folks that are trying to utilize some of the solutions out in the field. And we're still cold, so excited about that. You know, there's some weird weather going on. Is it cold out where you're at? Oh, we, we're just coming out of, as of like seven o'clock this morning, a winter storm warning that promised about two feet of snow, but we got about three inches. Um, so it's about windy and it's gross out there. It definitely feels like November, but uh, I look at the calendar and it's certainly, certainly wild. Yeah, we, uh, let's see, because it's supposed to get, it's cold right now and then it gets warm again and then cold again like warmth through the weekend, like Saturday, like just like last week. Define cold in Arizona. Um, like 60 degrees. It's cold. Oh, that's that's hoodie and that's hoodie weather right there. Yeah. Everyone wears pants and hoodies when it's that cold. For some folks, like probably Jason, it's still short weather and short sleeve weather. But <laughs> yeah, yeah no doubt. LA's cold too. Ryan, uh, I but, love that image. <laughs> But we're excited. We're going to be talking about um, the review for iPad apps and then also Bluebeam Cloud. So before Bluebeam Cloud was released, there was the workflow of using review on your iPad with sessions to go out to the field. We've demonstrated this before. We'll demonstrate some of it today as well. Um, but essentially what you would use is the sessions capability with the iPad application um, to be in the field, and you can follow the same suit now with your um, Surface Pro because it has a Windows-based application, and you can now download the full application and log in if you're on Review 21 um, up to five devices. So you could have your laptop, and then the Surface Pro you can sign in as well. So those are the comparisons. You know, we went back and forth before Jason and I on being huge advocates for the. Uh, iPad application, but now with Review 21, we've kind of gone more back to the Surface Pro just because you have that full capability. Just, But that just depends on what you're using as well. Um, if you're using cloud or the application, if you're using the application, I think him and I would both agree that the Surface Pro is going to be the way to go if you're using the workflow of studio sessions out in the field, right? And that used to be the old workflow before cloud was released. Uh, being able to do punch lists, markup, and document live when you're out in the field because you would invite yourself to a session um, and anyone else that's going out there into the field and utilizing that workflow and access that from the Surface Pro markup because you don't have to have internet connection and most people do now on job sites, but you didn't have to and you can mark up out in the field and then that same document will be the same one that you're going to access from your sessions on your desktop when you get back into um, wherever you're going to from an office perspective after the field. That used to be the workflow. Then cloud was released. Cloud now also gives you the ability to mark up in the field. When it first was released, Jason and I kind of hesitated because you, you lost some of the features. You couldn't measure, you couldn't mark up. Is really just that first iteration of Bluebeam Cloud, um, which was previously part of what was it? Drawings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was drawings. Project was, Rover and drawings and all that stuff. Yeah, Project Rover and drawings were mixed together, and it really just had the capabilities for your iPhone and Android app to just access the PDFs. Now they're starting to create this evolution of it, and that's kind of what we've been talking about before. We can't wait till they come out with more things, more things, more things. Um, 
and finally now you can mark up on your iphone and also android um i looked up reviews i talked to folks i haven't used an android phone for this i've used the iphone and it works seamlessly of course jason and i are in the field every day <laughs> so if any of you are using the cloud app in the field and using it on your iPhone or Android, please comment and let us know in terms of your use cases for them as well, because we're not out in the field. We're in a stable environment here in our offices or remote whenever we're remote um, using that app. So if you do have experience using it from an iPhone perspective, is it better than the iPad that we're about to show in sessions or not? And then also the Android app so that everyone else can also Okay, so Liz says she cannot mark up on the Android. Mm -hmm. but so Liz was kind enough to post her matrix, her updated matrix on our LinkedIn group. So there is a morning coffee review LinkedIn group. And this morning, Liz put in her matrix of iPad app versus iPad with Chrome versus iPad with Safari versus Android app, Android Chrome and computer on Chrome. So she's done a ton of testing uh, on those different platforms for some different things. And we're going to get into some of them and, and double check it a little bit today. Um, and just to go back, we talked about the Surface Pro because when we started MCR, I was using a Surface Pro and that was my, uh, my home computer, my home PC. Um, and, and since it is <laughs> such a small uh, form factor and it is tablet-like, it makes a good, good, uh, reasonable device to take oh. out to the field. Hold on, let's put a pin in that. Surface Pro is your home computer. Yeah, yeah. So for those folks that play video games, Mr. Hartley never played video games, and I would assume anyone in this household never played video games. Oh no, uh, I mean, my son's got xboxes and all that other stuff oh okay um, so consoles a, i forgot there's, a, that's a thing i've got a console but i don't i don't game very often but uh you know the surface pro could be used as when, when we when we're talking about it any small form factor uh windows based intel based device so there are you know small dells and hps and stuff that can run review 21 in the field and be okay however um as matt put in the chat earlier the cameras on those devices are fairly terrible, right? So the Surface Pro actually has a somewhat decent camera. If you were work, walking on the job site, you could bing, 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 take photos just as you could on the iPad. iPad camera is probably going to be a little better these days. But well, just hold saying. on. So let, let me Google while you keep talking. Okay. I don't know what you're Googling, but um, yes, Liz, you can play Candy Crush on the Surface as well as Fallout. Um, that was the <laughs> ones I played, the 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 lab one. Anyway. Well, are we comparing the iPad? We compared the Pro, right? Because Surface Pro, iPad Pro. So the Surface Pro has a 10 MP with 1080 okay. HD um, good camera. and 4K video. And the iPad, so it's 12 MP. So and then the FPS, well, it just says 12 MP, and I don't know what MP means. Megapixel. I'm just getting oh megapixel, thank you. Um, and then it has f slash 1.8. I don't know what that means either. Frames uh, per stop. second, maybe. I don't know. No, that's the reference of the lens. Okay. But, so that's what, pretty darn good specs. It'd be good enough for job site stuff. That's the i the iPad Pro. The other one is just 10 megapixels. That's still, that's still plenty. Okay. Um, you know, in the days of flip phones, it would it was a big deal to have a two megapixel camera. So um and, and people survived with that so and then it says while the ipad's sensor is technically superior you probably won't be using either one to take pictures or videos even if you do have hands large enough to handle it so the ipad right. pro is larger yeah right and for today's exercise i'm just using a basic ipad it's the cheapest full-size model so there's still the the mini the iPad and the iPad Pro. I don't have the iPad Pro. That is pretty big and it is fairly unwieldy. It's also expensive. So maybe it's not a device that you want to take out into the field. Uh, but it is pretty handy if you are doing laser scanning. Um, so there we go. So on that note, we're going to fire up review for the desktop. We're going to hop into studio real quick, look at some of the options there, and then we're going to hop over to mobile land 
and we'll take a look at the iPad, um, both the app, the, the review for iPad app. Now, when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about review 21. I'm talking about review for iPad. It's in the app store. It's $10. It's less than two stars. That's what it is. I but I will get it from the app store. Yeah, I will say you don't have to pay for it if you're just using it for this workflow because you can access an invite from sessions, markup, capture photos if you wanted to, or you can pay the $10 fee for the full app. Because essentially what you're able to do within sessions is you can mark up completely in the review interface and add photos. Now, there's a caveat there because they change it with Review 21. I don't know if the iPad application had an update where you had, no, it probably doesn't because it's not, again, it's not single sign on. So yeah, you can still mark up in a session from the view app because there's the paid for app and then there's VU, which is the free app and that you can still join sessions. Okay. Correct. And then we've clarified everything. Should we jump in? Well, let's jump in. Okay. So in order to start a session, um, you would want to create it from your desktop before you're going out into the field. So this is going to be specifically about creating sessions. And from the desktop application, you would create a session that you're going to invite your um, whatever user ID that you're going to use on the iPad. That's because we're not talking about cloud yet, right? We're talking about studio sessions. So from here, you're going to go into studio and then you have sessions here and you have the ability to go through and create a session. So from this point, the session again is the whiteboard icon and you can hit plus from here and you can create a new session. You can name it whatever you'd like and we'll do MCR field. See, my M doesn't work. Jason and I were just talking about how our keyboards are all messed up. Um, MCR field. Am I going to invite this one to you or are you going to use just like the demo one that we have? I'm going to use the, the MCR 2023 one that I've already got set up. OK, <laughs> but just to make it easy, but I'll, I'll show the workflow on, on how yeah. to join that. So MCR field and then from here, what files are you going to add? So we'll go through and add this one um, over here. So documents and then we'll go to review and demo docs. Eats. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to open those up. Doesn't matter for this. Restrict attendees. Yes, because I just don't want everyone joining from the YouTube land. And we're going to go and hit OK. Oh, look at that, Liz. That's. I knew that was coming, but I didn't think it was coming today. It wasn't there yesterday. Interesting. We'll talk about that. See if I've got that on on mine because that's going to change things a little bit yeah um liz <laughs> let's make sure that so apps i'm i'm checking are you keep, okay keep, keep on what you're doing um and then from here this was a ui change and i think it was a 19 the version of review 19 that they decided to finally update the ui so you can invite people um so everyone can have mr artley's work email address. Is that the one that's on your iPad? Yep. Okay. Feel free to email him anytime. Yeah, I, my spam filter works really well. <laughs> so you can type in as many as you want. You could copy paste and then you can add additional emails here if you want. You can add a message of what that's going to be and I'll invite participants. Invite has been sent and now he's been invited and he can use this out in the field as well as I can use this by opening up my PDFs. I can see who's not joined, so Artly has not joined yet. You could send him a reminder if you wanted to. You can add folks again from here as well. We're not gonna go too in the weeds for settings or anything like that. Um, we've done plenty of studio session conversations, demos, competitions. So they're all back on our YouTube channel and you can go back into there. Um, what'd you find out, Artly? Yep, oh, I did get an email saying that you've been invited to a studio session uh, with the MCR field name. Um, and I opened up the Bluebeam Cloud uh, website on my Windows-based Edge browser, and I don't have nope. what uh, Liz has. It is has. just for you, Liz. So, uh, so it, I don't they know have if I can delete this. 
no, it's it's not a secret. Um, Did they announce it? Yeah, they they announced it. So I wanted to address that as well. Um, so we're going to hop into the. Michael just showed you how to create the studio session on the review desktop. This is still going to be a key part of the workflow. You still need desktop to kick off the session. But we're going to show you different ways to access it, both through uh, the Bluebeam iPad app and cloud. Now, wait a minute. I just said cloud and sessions. It's not exactly the same. Right, so cloud currently has some functionality, which I will show. The functionality that Liz and some of the other people have isn't quite ready for prime time. So, Wait, so hold on, I, I'm just confused. They announced it when? Yep. So Bluebeam did a webinar last month, um, public webinar, announcing the new AI features for review, like what's coming in review 21. So the AI features that are coming in April are uh, the auto align, the 3D, mm -hmm. 2D to 3D building. Well, I forget what they called that one. If anybody wants to put that in the chat. And then there was another one that was pretty exciting. And then at the end of that webinar, they showed sessions for cloud. And they showed sessions for cloud in a web browser. So it's going to be interesting. Was it on accident? No. It, it was, was very much announced, very intentional. But they told, okay, I'm just confused because we weren't allowed to say anything, but they can go and say it hey, and I, still keep us under wraps. The recording okay. is out there. Uh, wow. You, you, can, you can see it. So mm. uh, thanks, Liz, for backing me up. It's not an accident. I won't get my hand slapped. And if I do, I'm going to blame Liz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, the reason that we're showing you this is the amount of options that you have. Right, because through so far, uh, so so many people have felt limited by sessions because well, oh, I don't have review twenty one, or I don't have uh, the money to spend, or I don't have the software downloaded. Bluebeam's listening, um, and what they're going to do is going to make it so access gets even easier. So that means from any web browser, you're going to be able to do this. Some of the stuff. So keep that in mind if you are shopping for an iPad or a Surface Pro. Um, if you don't need the photo capability, things are going to get interesting. So I think All that's right. a good segue, though. The reason I, and this was a tinfoil hat before everyone saw this webinar, which I didn't see. Um, the exciting part about that is, right, we were all frantically concerned about studio being down. But now, hint, hint. That's why. <laughs> okay, so part of that thing. So as we all know, and I talked about it last week, because um, review or Bluebeam said, "Hey, we're going to take down Studio for the weekend. We're going to do some updates." And it was down for more than a weekend. Uh, it's two weeks. It was off and on for two weeks, and there was some issues there. Now with that, with that, the fix for that, they actually pushed out an update for the iPad for review for iPad. The first update that they've pushed out in probably 10 years, it looks like. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'll preface that because when I open up the iPad here in just a second and show you review for iPad, some of you are going to be like, what is that? I've never seen those buttons before. Um, and you're absolutely right because it's based on pre-2018, right? So we're, we're talking seven-year-old plus old interface the buttons are going to look different it's not for everybody and i think this is why it gets poor ratings on the app store right people download it thinking that they're getting something special like hey cool i'm getting a 400 product for ten dollars it's going to be the same it's not like what do you yeah. expect um so without further ado let's, i'll stop uh, sharing my screen let's do that so here's part of my trick everybody let's see if this works well, I'm glad that some somehow they made it out of the um, the gates of embargo mint that now right. people can rest assured of some more clarity of why things were being messed up in studio when it's been a steady solution for decades. Exactly. So hopefully you can see this. I took my main camera and 
mounted it uh, in a strange sort of hardware store way uh, above my iPad so you can see exactly what the workflow is going to be, right? And on my iPad here, I have both review for desktop or sorry, review for iPad and Bluebeam Cloud. We're going to start, and I also have the old uh, drawings. So we're going to start with review Oh, you for still iPad. have that. That's yeah, cool. I'm not going to get rid of it. It's like a collector's item at this point, right? So in review for iPad, you're going to notice a couple things. If you've never opened it before, there is a quick start guide. And this quick start guide is actually kind of handy. And I'll show you how to access it after the fact. But it shows you how to how to uh, navigate the interface. It shows you the file syncing. It shows you how to do markups. It shows you how to work through some of these things as well as what you can do with Studio, right? So you can access Studio Sessions and Projects and uh, Studio Go, which is kind of an old thing. As I said, it's an old product, so it's not completely up to date. What they at pushed out for the update last week in response to the Studio outage was just some sort of connection to let it maintain that connection back to studio right so i'll go ahead and dismiss that when most folks open up review for ipad this is what they see it's very sparse right you have your uh panels here so you do have some tool chests you do have thumbnails you have bookmarks you have a search and you have measurements but it doesn't look the same right you do you can cr you can create is this a new the paid document. for one Yes, this is the pay okay. for one. Uh, you can email things. Oh, that's your file access. Uh, save, open, studios right here. And then, of course, you have some other settings. Now, I'm going to go to the settings. I might just switch to finger here because the status thing isn't working. Um, in here. It's, you know you why? Have, you need the actual pen from Apple. That's probably why. I don't think it's compatible with this one. This is an older, older uh... dude. But... Uh, but overall, it's 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 pretty basic. Yeah, right? that that A one there on the right is your markups. So that right. yeah, right here. Oh, but you don't have a PDF open. So yeah, you gotta have a PDF yeah. open. So we'll go ahead and uh, well, I suppose if I could do file access, um, I've got some things loaded in here. So let's see if it'll work. There we go. So with a PDF open, and you've seen me demonstrate this one before. Um, I do have those markups where I can hit the A button here up at the top and I've got text, I've got pen, I've got a uh, text box, I've got highlighter, I've got callouts, I've got clouds, I've got audio. Now this is the feature that you can only get in review for iPad. This doesn't exist in anywhere else, which is actually pretty darn cool. You can record messages. So if you're in the field and you're trying to describe something and you don't wanna type because I know I'm terrible with typing on uh, on iPad keyboards. You can just record yourself. Uh, we see this used a lot, actually, mm -hmm. with folks who are on the go. You've got gloves on. Um, I love this one. Trying to be more effective. Now, if you record something um, in a session, it's going to put that little audio bite so it's accessible from the desktop, which is pretty damn cool, right? Additionally, we've got uh, camera functions. I can take pictures, I can do sticky notes, uh, I can do whatever that one is, snapshots. Um, I've got some stuff in here for, uh, what is that? Oh, the typewriter command. Again, these icons are old, folks. <laughs> My brain is they're not the, associating. Yeah, That's they're the, the review pre, 17 yeah, and below. Exactly. So, but there's still a lot of the functionality here, right? Circles, and I can even scroll down. There's even more. So there's a ton of functionality. I could flatten in here. I can do a lot. But if you don't know how to access it and you're first to open the software, especially if you're used to review 21, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And that's sort of what we're trying to uh, show you. It doesn't deserve to be a two-star app, in my opinion, because we've got some tricks that are going to help you navigate that. Now, that said... Do I see this thing living another five years? Absolutely not. Tinfoil hat time. Uh, I don't think this software is going to live very long because of the added functionality that's coming to cloud. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it that as is. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dismiss my uh, PDF that I've got here. I'm discard all my changes, and we're going to open up 
the studio, right? And um, Liz said it's not as horrendous as people indicate in this two-star app. And Liz, you go to the field a lot, correct? According to social media. That's what I mean. That's why. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So she said no. Okay. I'm. I pulled down the studio icon from the top bar here, right? So I'll see if I can use my stylus again. There's that studio icon. That should look familiar to you. It's just a little bit different from Review 21. And up at the top, normally, you're going to start, and it's going to be empty because you need to actually hit the Connect button, right? Um, You'll hit the Connect button. You'll log in, and it's going to be the same login, um, depending if you have a different Bluebeam ID for your iPad than you do your desktop. In this case, I'm using my same login that I use for Review 21. Right now with this, I have, once I'm connected, I have sessions and I have projects just as I do in review 21 desktop. The icons are similar, just a little bit uh, more cartoony. And I've got my sessions and I've got my projects. Additionally, I have my chair where I can join. So if I wanted to type in the ID that uh, Michael already invited me to, I can do so there. I'm going to skip that though. And then I have my studio. If I wanted to join a different session or add files, I have those capabilities right here. So, and then of course I've got the sign out button. I'm not going to click on that and show you what that does. Uh, but for this case, I'm going to join um, my MCR 2023 session. And I'm going to open up a file. Here I can see Michael is waiting on that one. And there we go. So this is interesting. I uploaded this yesterday and it looks a little different than what I had. All right, time for experiment time. Did you click the other one maybe? Is that why? Uh, No. You had two in there. Did I? Yeah. Let's go obsession. Let's leave this one. No, you had two PDFs in that one, yeah. See? Maybe the, the first reference one. plan. Oh, it still shows me in that. Well, actually, I'm going to pull up review for desktop. So you're not going to see me navigating here because I'm using my computer and I might oh have two open already. And I'm going to try to join the same session and see if this lets me. Oh, I know what I did wrong there. Uh, I had the icon that it was not fully done. Ah, okay. So it is the same. So I'll go ahead and share my screen real quick, just so you can see. So, oh, on my camera, I've been disconnected from your session because another because this account is now logged into. It's because you're session logging into your desktop. Computer. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why so, I use my other that, email address yeah that's why you create a secondary email address yeah. but it looks like some of the changes that i made on the desktop here because i had that set up different with different icons yesterday um looks like those didn't port over interesting so i'm going to stop sharing i'm going to leave that session it does show interesting i'm going to close review altogether and then I mean, I can watch you make markups to see if they're uploading correctly. So, yeah. So let's go back here. So, boom, session. Go back to my MCR, and there's my file. So, with this, what all can I do inside of this session? Right now, you've seen us demo this file a bunch of different times. Um, there's a few things in here that I wanted to show in particular, right? And that was that overall, it's gonna look very similar to the desktop product, right? I still have all my markups, you know, I still have my measurements. I still have a lot of those things in here. And then down at the bottom, if you've ever missed that little uh, half circle, I have all my markup list, right? In addition to that, I have my studio, which gives me my report list, right? reconnected, added file attachment. We see all of those things down here at the bottom. So I have my record. I have my markup list. Um, I have a few different things. Now, 
I also have statuses. Now, I didn't create that one. So in the same uh, fashion as the desktop product, I cannot manipulate other people's markups, which is always nice to know, right? But can I manipulate the ones that I made? Now, I made this one yesterday in the desktop product. And now it will allow me to cut, copy, delete, add a leader, add to my tools, auto size the text box or capture or set as default, right? So a lot of the same desktop review commands are still here and I can manipulate. I'm going to move, drag this over, make it real ugly. And let's, gonna... as you're doing that, can I show real quick? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as he's doing that, I put this on the other screen so I can watch him start making, doing things. Hard oh, okay. So yeah, <laughs> you can see as I'm moving on my iPad in the session and making a mess of my uh, callouts here, you can see it dancing on Michael's screen. So it's happening in real time. This is assuming that I have a internet connection. Now, if I did not have an internet connection, I'm going out to the job site. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hotspot to my phone or have uh, have uh, internet there. What you want to do is make sure that you access the file that you want to access on the internet before, before you leave the internet, right? So if I know I'm going onto the job site, I'm going to pull this up on my iPad. I'm going to hop on the truck. I'm going to go to the job site and I can work offline. Right. As long as that file is open, I can add my markups. I can add my photos. I can add my audio. I can add whatever I want to add. And then once I reconnect to the internet, it's going to sync all that stuff. And then we would see that pop up on Michael's screen. Right. That's one of the things that comes up quite a lot um, with our support team is like, hey, does review for iPad work without internet? Yeah. All review was again is meant to work without internet. It's a construction focused mm -hmm. software. And we know that. Not, internet's not for everywhere. All right. So uh, should you be a little bit paranoid, Liz? I see that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> however, um, you can save locally, which is always recommended. Right. Okay. So back here in review, I wanted to show a couple different things. And, and one of the things that we've shown here on MCR before when it comes to working with the review product for iPad is if I go make a markup, right? Let's say I go make a call out or let's just do a simple polygon, right? I'm gonna create something and now it's done. If I go to my settings for that, oops, not the same settings icon. Come here, I'm trying to do this just using my thing. I have cut, copy, delete, add to my tools, set as default, convert to arc, capture. I don't have my other gear icon, which is down here, right? Mm. It makes it really confusing. There's a gear icon up at the top, which is your your review settings or your review for iPad settings down at the bottom when you select something. Let me get out of here. Um, when you select something, you have ability to change your colors and your fill. So if I want that to be cyan with a purple outline, different text fonts, you have those thicknesses, your different hatches, you have a ton of those settings as well, but they're a little harder to get to because you got to get pretty darn efficient with this in order to not make that mistake because I just hit undo and I broke everything and now I have to recreate the wheel. All right, so what I wanted to show in here is that configuring your tools, doing all that stuff is really frustrating in the iPad app. This is why you wanna lean on the review desktop product because you can take your tool sets from review and bring them right into your session and make it easy for you. So that's what I was doing over here. These files that I have are actually icons for tool sets or BTX files that I uh, exported from the desktop product, right? And as I double click on them, 
tool set successfully imported. If I go to my tool set now, I should have additional ones that I uploaded from the desktop product. So I can go create, you know, what tools am I going to need in the field? I can go ahead and create those files and have that configured for me. That way it's easily to port it to the iPad. This means my whole team who's out there with an iPad, they can just double click on that and have company settings. Now, yesterday I had these configured a little nicer with the file icon and a different call out, but for some reason it didn't port over. So let's say uh, I wanted to use this as an opportunity to, you know, conceptualize my space, right? I've got an open office here. If I go back to my tool set, <clears throat> I can start dropping in desks, right? I can start dropping in appliances, depending on what tool set I used. Let's put a sink right there, right? So we can bring over those icons accordingly. We can use this in a couple different ways. So it'd be pretty handy. You know, not everybody's visual. You could be walking out in the space. Will that desk fit there? Boom, drop it in. As long as my files were to scale, I'd be good to go. All right. There was a question about measure. How does okay. how does the measure functionality work in here? I don't know if it'd be great to pick spots for measure, but I mean, you no, try. I don't think it will. Let's go find a straight line. All right. So how about this little meeting area here? I'll pull up the measurement tools here. Pull up the measurement tools. Why can't I measure? Huh? I think it has this is because it has to be set before. Uh, Let me because we're in a session. right? Oh, there's there's length. It just jumps me down okay. to a different spot. So there is a length where I can go measure this. However, clicking, I can't zoom in any further than that. <laughs> See, I try to zoom in. It's just not letting me do it. Um, this is not the right tool for this. However, if you do this right, so if you grab that grip, I feel like I feel I'm like I'd be getting so close to that screen. <laughs> right? Just stick your face right in there. Yeah. If you so if you click, now I haven't placed anything yet. I'm just holding down on the spot where I want to start. It's giving me the sort of sniper crossfire uh crosshair. It's not snapping to content like review 21 would do. Right? It's gonna get me pretty close. I'm gonna put my reading glasses on. Uh, I know. I'm like, so, this is see. I'm not a gamer. I'd be, uh, I'd be dead by now. And then I can go over here, grab my other spot. I'm just gonna go roughly there. Yeah, sweet. I can't wait to put that on my as built and get slapped um, <laughs> <laughs> for doing 93 to 56. Um, there are some things in here that I mean, if you had your precision set just right. Come here. If you grab the grip, you might be able to, there we go, adjust that and get a little closer. So it's not optimal. It's if you're trying optimal. to measure something, use your desktop application. If but the if you need saw a quick... me doing this stuff out in the field, they'd be very, very upset with me wasting my time like that. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you need a quick and easy one out in the field, by all means, but like, I, I would assume every construction site has a trailer. So if you need to go and measure something, but what if you're like 20 stories up? I get it. Maybe quick fly on the fly, sniper across, throw a dimension yeah. on there. But um, if you can get to uh, a spot easier to just fully measure in this, the actual software, probably. But again, it's there, but. Right. I get, yeah. Now, one of the things that we wanted to show was that here in review for iPad, there actually is a measurement tool, right? I can measure areas, I can do things in here. Bluebeam Cloud does not have measurement tools yet. They mm -hmm. know, they're aware, it's coming, supposedly. Yeah, Peter said that it, would, it will be part of their platform at some point, just not yet. Right, but think about how difficult this is on a product that's eight years old, right? Uh, it doesn't even measure very well. And that's not necessarily, I mean, some of the limitations are based on what you can do with an iPad, to be fair. Um, this is a four-year-old iPad as well. So we're dealing with <clears throat> some outdated technology. 
but I can do areas. I can do perimeters. I can do some stuff. I can still calibrate, right? But if I want to calibrate to this 30 mark, 30 foot mark, it's, it's kind of tough. I mean, take take it this way: like if you if if a company went out and like got a bunch of fleets of iPads, by all means, use what's there. Like we're not discouraging if someone invested that much. Um, it just comes down to being aware of what you can and cannot do. So no, now if someone asks you, can you quickly on the fly take a measurement? It's actually not as efficient, but yes, I can, right? Mm -hmm. Just knowing the differences. And then if you really needed to do on the fly measurements on every single job site like this, cause they weren't providing correct dimensions. Well, a, um, maybe we should have a conversation with how the, the CD sets are being printed out, you know, or go to the area, make a measurement on the desktop application. And then when you're out in the field, you can see those measurements from, from the desktop application or surface pro, right? There's a bunch of options. We're just showing those comparisons of them. Right. So <clears throat> Doug, you, you make a great point. Field dimensions are a thing, right? So what do we mean by that? It was clunky for me to try to accurately measure something, but if I see it's 30 feet here, I can quickly do a two click, get pretty darn close. 29, 11, okay, that's 30 feet, right? I know that it's pretty darn close. I can pull out a tape and and be reasonable to tut, to put in what I need to do or, or extract the information I need to grab. You're probably not gonna spend all that time going with your sniper crosshairs. That's maybe something for later. If you were trying to actually make something um, incredibly hyper accurate mm -hmm. to rainy day, you're sitting in the truck, you're bored, that type of thing. All right. So there are call outs that you can do. There are markups you can do. Again, this is the $10 version. You can do a lot of things in here. You can do things in this $10 app that you can't do in the $240 app, the desktop app, right? So it, it is all not. It's not worthless. It's worth a ten dollars by far. Um, but are there better products? Of course. Will it work? Sure. But where are we going with all this? Where where is Bluebeam going? And again, this is all tinfoil hat stuff. The writing's on the wall that everything's moving to Bluebeam Cloud, and that's where I'm going to transition now. So I'm going to leave my session. Right. I'm going to go back to my file. I'm going to leave that session. I'm now done with that and I'm going to exit review for desktop and we're going to open up Bluebeam Cloud. Now, uh, I'm going to back up a little bit because I was already in this file. See, I told you I did stuff with it. Um, I was here's the same exact file inside of Bluebeam Cloud. Now I'm going to start here and then I'm going to back up to show you how I got here. Um, but here, look at this. I've got select, tells me the wall type. It tells me some information. I have a, a box. I have a cloud. I have an oval. I have a text box. I have a, a leader highlight and a pen. I have a punch list and I have an RFI. Those are the only tools that I have currently here in review. I mean, that's a lot more than there used to be. So exactly. They're adding them every day, it looks like. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and we're going to jump back to where I was. I'm going to start. And that was an dashboard. exaggeration every yeah. day. So when you first load Bluebeam Cloud, now I will preface this saying that this was not an easy process. Yesterday or last week when I was getting ready for this, this episode, I hit the update button for Bluebeam Cloud and I logged in and there was nothing there. I had to really? uninstall and I had to reinstall Bluebeam Cloud to see, to make this match my desktop product. Hold on. Let right. me see. Let me see. So there were, it has had some, I've always struggled with Bluebeam Cloud for the iPad. Now, yesterday, everything's up working good. I'm going to go ahead and jump in. So as Did I. Did you invite me to this? I think you have MCR March. I think you created this one. Did I? Let me sign in. I'm signing in on my phone to see. Okay. Um, my phone works pro no problem. The phone for the iPad or iPhone works great. The iPad one has issues, had issues. I think we're back in business. But when you first log in, it's pretty sparse. This is my dashboard. Now, the dashboard inside of Bluebeam Cloud for the website, which I'll show here in a minute, is a little bit more intuitive. 
but I want to jump on my project, MCR March. And now I see my stuff. I have my location, which I can add. I have my admin rights. I have my you drawings. You created this. I don't have access to MCR March. Let's fix that. Invite user. Who's mm -hmm. showing whose email now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, doo -doo. Permission level. You can be admin. You're not on a team, so we'll just say none, and I will go ahead and invite you. Let's so see you how are long it admin takes as me. well. So I can do that from. I the just got website. the invite immediately. That's pretty slick. Confirm. In the app or on your email? On my phone. Nice. So yeah, Michael is going to join me here in MCR March. I created it uh, almost a year ago to the day. Funny that. Yep, so I, I have access some... to the drawings and everything. No, no issue on the phone. Perfect. Um, whatsoever, getting access to PDFs. Everything was seamless. Yep. Good to hear. Um, all right. In my drawings here, so I've got different files that we have uploaded. These files get a little interesting, right? Uh, how do I add drawings? Right? They're if way I go more. To my drawings, I don't have an easy way to upload those drawings. <clears throat> right? You need to. You can't hold down. There's no magical menu. If I had drawings on my iPad or on my mobile device and I needed to upload those, I can't do that from the app. That has to be done on the website, right? Let me go look at my computer here and see if that's on Liz's magical uh, document. Uploading the raw rings. We're getting in the weeds here. So actually, the U.S. 57.93% market share in the U.S. What? Sorry. Oh. You missed the comment. Doug said that there's way more Android users, and I was confused because I, I would think that iPhone is pretty predominantly used here in the United States, and it is. It's 57.93% use iPhones comparative to the 43.7% for Android users. And that's probably something to do with why the government is suing them, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> All right. So back into Bluebeam Cloud, I'm attesting something. I can zoom in closer than I can on Review for iPad. I still can't measure anything, but I can zoom in closer and it looks pretty good. Right? Um, I can create clouds in here. Yeah, globally, it's completely different. But hey, squirrels, we're talking about clouds over here. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> we don't need to talk about Android and Apple anymore. It doesn't matter. Um, so with my cloud, I can create this. One thing that is easier in cloud is the ability to change line color and fill color, right? It seems way more intuitive than the review product. What's not intuitive is how do I get rid of this thing? I didn't mean to create that. Right, you can click on it, it will tell me it. There's no delete option that there was in the review problem. What you got to do is hold on to it and then you can edit it or delete it. So that's not an exactly intuitive thing for people to, to know. That's why I wanted to show it. But then you can delete that markup. All right, pretty darn cool. Hold on, make a mark. Oh, I'm seeing it almost live, but the delete, really? yeah, it didn't delete it automatically though, but I see the markup. I open it and close. Yeah. So if you just open the PDF and reclose it once a change has been made, I'll see it immediately. So I have to hit exit on the phone once you've made something. Interesting. And then it recaches it. Yep. Now there is no comparing to the text box option that we saw in review, there is no auto size text box. I can change my font size. I can change my line color. I can change my fill color and opacity. <clears throat> but I cannot set as default. I cannot uh, auto size that text box, meaning make it look like that. 
I got to do that manually. So once you're done. But I can move it. Okay. Hit exit. Go back and do it. Whoa. Did you those put those boxes mine. there? Yeah. Look at that. Okay. So Michael made those rectangles. I can edit them. Something I cannot do in a session. Mm-hmm. And that's probably though. why it's being added. Interesting. Okay. So I can manipulate markups that were not made by me. Big, big fat difference, big fat disclaimer there. Now, one thing of note, Michael created this. There should be metadata. It should have his Bluebeam ID. It should have some data related to it. And none of that is accessible. Mm -mm. So this is just for making pure basic markups, just as if it were a pen, right? There are icons in here for tool sets. I can't do anything with them. They added so many colors. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, I see the rectangle, but there's no metadata there. If I go to the ones that I created, I have my name, the tool set, what it is. Additionally, I have Well, I can, I can see it on my phone. So on my phone, if I click a markup, there is that thing that you get, but it's on the bottom part. Interesting. So like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, so if I click it, there is a thing at the bottom. See my screen? Mm, no. It's this oh. thing. It's like this thing right here. Okay. Yeah. So you can scroll up. Oh, I just got out of my app. Then it says, hold on, that. Oh, okay. It's got all the information. Yeah. But that is not accessible for me. Huh. Interesting. So yeah. Um why why are we showing you all this? Because when we first opened up cloud when it came out over a year ago, I think collectively it's safe to say we we're all underwhelmed. It was um, like it was like that balloon that you blow up and you let all the air out. Yeah. Um, this is getting better. If I needed to do basics, work, walking through, punch listing, cool. It's going to work for that. Collaboratively, it is a little bit of a challenge because of the lack of metadata and for the lack of security, lack of integrity, I should say. Um, I can go manipulate Michael's stuff freely. I can even delete it. Meaning if he made markups on my file, on my project saying, hey, uh, this wall needs to be repainted, I can delete it and say, hey, I never saw that. I right? still think like being on my phone right now, and if I had to go to the fields and we're using a paper, you're using paper still, um, the app would blow me away if, if I was on the iPhone. Sorry, Doug, I need to switch. Yeah. Um, Brian is seeing the chat way over there on my screen. Uh, this is the iPad app, so not the web browser. There are some differences in the web browser, um, but we're saving that for later because we'll pull that up on the actual um, computer because yeah. that makes it life easier. I, I would believe it's going to be so, so there. Doug was saying the lack of measurements. I, I mean, gosh, like. The fact that I can scroll in so far on my phone, I think measurements are going to be amazing. Because the one thing I don't like about the web browser, Artly, is that like the scrolling is different. You have to like zoom in mm -hmm. on your phone, so you can just like pinch, pinch and move. Zoom. Yeah, mm -hmm. like and you can get cl look at that. It's gonna. I think measurements once they get them into here is going to be way mm -hmm. easier. It's coming. I mean, yeah. obviously, that's a, one of the biggest gripes on the, in, in that webinar that I discussed a little bit ago. Um, I did ask that because there was a q and I'm like, hey, when are measurements coming? And they said, uh, I believe they said later this year. We'll see. I mean, they, they have to know. In order for this to be a tool that it needs to be, now I'm going to come back to that, the tool that it needs to be, um, they're going to have to have that. Now, yeah. why does it? Why is it the tool that it has yeah, to be? Yeah, five minutes. Yeah. Because, well, Bluebeam uh, is not the only player in the mobile game. 
there's something called Autodesk Construction Cloud, mm. which is gaining a ton of steam. It seems like each week us here at ATG are having more and more conversations about it. Um, it Autodesk is, I'm going to say, a, being a little bit of a bully and saying, hey, Bluebeam, hey, Procore, leave me alone, watch what I can do, right? Again, with the t- tinfoil hat. And yeah. the improvements to Autodesk Construction Cloud are getting very, very strong. And it can do PDFs mobily, and it can measure on them. So that's a big, big miss on Bluebeam's part. They really need to get that going. But I would imagine it's coming. I mean, I know that it's, it's coming. But in the meantime, if you do need to make measurements on a PDF in the field, you're going to have to put it in the review iPad app, assuming you have an iPad, or use Autodesk Construction Cloud, which for some people is probably included with your licensing already. So for docs, a, yeah. if you've got docs, you'll be okay. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I have both. It's going to be the 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 upper hand Bluebeam has on ACC is the ability to have world class markups. The issue being here in the the application, they're not giving you the full depths of those markups. They're it's similar markups to what ACC has. So it's going to be a close race and we'll be here for the ride in comparing both solutions because we want you all to be aware of the differences between both of them um, and make that strategic planning on either which one you want to go through. So we're excited. Yeah. You know, and especially speaking to architects, engineers and construction folks, we know that there's a right tool for the job and there's a tool that can get the job done, right? So that's what we're going to be here to compare because sometimes the cloud app might be the way to go. Sometimes review for iPad might be the way to go. And sometimes construction cloud or something else or both will be the way to go. And we're that's what we're here to discuss. Um, that said, we got a couple minutes left. I do want to show the punch workflow while I'm still sharing my screen here. Now, I did have to zoom in to where I wanted to be because you can't zoom in once you hit this button. So I'm going to hit punch. I'm going to place my punch markup. This will still let me to zoom in. I'll just grab this water closet over here. And I can have new item. Now, at this point, with this dialog box up, I can no longer zoom. Location, uh, women's restroom, official question, um, not hooked up. I can spell, I swear. Priority, eh, that's going to be a hot priority depending on who's on the job site. Due date, uh, let's make that the 28th. Let's actually click on the 28th. There we go. Assign, I can go grab Michael since he's on my team, mm-hmm. right? And save that. Scope of work, this is going to be plumbing. You've got a whole list here. I don't know if you can read it all. Plumbing. And you can add to that list. That was an update a little while back that they did. Yep. And then here is where I can take a photo. Since I have an iPad, I can go take a photo of that issue, add some more clarity to it, and save this. Now, when I save that punch list, Michael should have got an update or some sort of notification that a punch list item was assigned to him. Yep. Let me see. Um, I don't want to be in drawings dashboard. Yep. Yep. Cool. But that's because I'm on the internet. So, yeah, but I mean, exactly. you have cellular, like, <laughs> yeah, I guess if it was a remote region. Yeah. You can get iPads with cellular. This will work on an iPhone, supposedly an Android. Uh, again, take a look at the LinkedIn post. I know Liz put it in the chat. As we wrap up here today, she made this amazing matrix on what can and can't be done. And it's certainly worth taking a look at. Do some testing yourself. Figure out what tool is going to work well for you and reply to her on the post because we'd love to see more engagement, see how you folks are using it, especially after our little demo today. And uh, we'll keep this conversation going because um, as we've teased and as Bluebeam has teased, there's going to be a lot of updates in this space. coming this year and and beyond. So we are in our sort of little arms race uh, with field 
collaboration tools, and it's pretty exciting to see. Um, thanks, Liz, for putting that back in the chat. Get caught up right here real quick as we uh, as we wrap up. Thanks for joining us today. As always, um, you'll see this up on YouTube later. And hello, everybody in future YouTube land. Uh, feel free to join us live every Tuesday morning, 830 Central. Um, and check out LinkedIn. Look for Morning Coffee Review. You'll see the post and the link every Tuesday morning to join us. And uh, with that, anything else to sign us off? No. That was great. Thanks, Arlie, for taking the time to put this together. We're excited. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe, comment, and join us live to ask real live questions to Artley and myself every Tuesday at 30 CST. And the rest of the community that joins us every week. All right, everybody, take care. We'll see you next week. Bye. Hey there, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of the other content on our channel.